<laughs> Good meeting. Thank you. Um, I'm Barry Malfurst. I'm the chairman of the policy committee. This is the policy committee meeting for the Commission on Disabilities and Special Needs. At um, this is going to be called to order at 303. And I appreciate all that have that have decided that it was necessary to come to listen to what we had to say here today. And I'm thankful for all you do for those with disabilities and special needs. Um, so I'm officially calling the meeting to order and asking that Susan would read the statement of announcement. A meeting notice announces the date, time, and place of the March 9th, 2021 policy committee meeting was distributed March 4th, 2021 to appropriate media and other groups or individuals who have requested notification. The announcement and agenda were posted at the Department of Disabilities and Special Needs Central Administrative Office and on the website. The public has been notified that accommodations such as interpreters, mobility assistance, or other assistance will be provided to individuals with disabilities and special needs if requested in advance. Thank you, ma'am. Um, the next item on the agenda is invocation, which I will um, give very quickly, but for the next meeting, I may try to call on somebody else. So if somebody else would like to do that, let me know that's on our committee um, for the next meeting. Um, dear Lord, thank you for allowing us to be here and Thank you for allowing us to do, to do, to, excuse me, to do your work through the Commission on Disability and Special Needs, not only for those with disabilities, but for the taxpayers of the state. Um, we are um, would like to be mindful of what you would have us to do here today, and we would ask that you would allow us to get things done that you would have us to do, and that it would go how you would see fit. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Um, the next item on the agenda is adoption of the agenda. Um, I'm gonna Mr. Chair, Mr. Chairman, I move that we adopt the agenda as printed. Okay. Um, I'm just going to do the um, by unanimous consent. So if I don't hear an objection, we're going to adopt these things as as the bylaw. I mean, as the um, I'm going to do this commission. I mean, this, this meeting by unanimous consent, so we don't have to do this. Motions and second so much. So if you have an objection, let me know. And if not, we'll move forward. Um, so if there's no objection to the adoption of the agenda, um, we'll move forward to the to the new business. And um, and say that the first item on under section one for our meeting today is the um, freedom of information I request document that we have. And it is primarily to review, the document has been reviewed by Constance, our attorney, and it obviously is in occurrence with the Freedom of, I mean, with the Freedom of Information Act. But there's some other things that we want to discuss regarding this, this act, and I will um, turn it over to Constance if you need to as this discussion goes on. Um, I guess Stephanie, the biggest reason you wanted us to bring this up was was due to the the fees for yeah, your requests. Well, I, and the fees are not a big deal with me. I, I I agree. We need to charge a fee. I just don't think we need to charge a fee to our providers who are DDSN. Um, you know, I have, I have a problem with us requ requiring DDSN um, organizations to. FOIA information. I think that that you know that is our job to to support them and provide them the information they need. I don't think we should have to FOIA. They should have to FOIA it. And if they do have to get to the point where they have to FOIA, we don't need to be charging them to provide that information to them. So this is. Can I ask a, uh, Barry? Could I ask a question? This is David. Sure. Um. Uh, maybe Stephanie can help me with this. Under what circumstances would a would a, a provider? I mean, I mean, if they need information on what's been done, wouldn't it be up on the website or or, or you know as a uh, directive? Uh, wh what would they need to FOIA something for? Wouldn't they just be able to call us up and 
That's call the uh, director up and say, I need this information to make sure we're clear about. Are they having to FOIA the department? Well, there was a FOIA request sent for Orange right. County um, regarding the FMAP money um, and wanting to know how it was being distributed, you know, across the state and how it was being spent. And they had requested that information multiple times, had not gotten a firm answer on it. So they basically fought, had to FOIA it. <laughs> That is terrible. I mean, really, that's outrageous. What they've asked for information from, gee whiz, that that's that's embarrassing. It really is a. Uh, I mean, they should have instant. You know, I remember something Gary, our chairman, has said, and at first, in my mind, uh, I took issue with it. But the more I thought about it, the more I think he was right when he said in one of our meetings. And uh, Gary, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but he he spoke of the importance. Of the of the provider in in, uh, in in the whole matrix of things that that we need to be uh, have them in mind and supporting them nearly as much as uh, uh, we 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 do any of the consumers and I, I thought well that's maybe over but the more I thought about it the more I thought well they're an integral player I mean uh, maybe that's got a lot of validity to it so I, I don't understand I I, I would really. I would really like to if if somebody FOIAs us that's part of the if that's part of our system that that is part of our system. I would really think that the commission should be informed of that. So I'm not arguing with anything about the the amounts, but but I think that should come up in a full commission meeting. If if there's anybody blocking or not giving full cooperation to the uh, to to the um, to the providers. I, as a commissioner, want to know about it and, and want to find out what's going on um, inside the, what, what do you call it, I guess our, our main department for, for not providing them what they need. Am, am I reading that right, Stephanie? Did, did you say what I thought you said? or, or? That is correct. Um, wait a second. I think I'm getting, um, Mr. Mr. Uh, commissioner Thomas, that is correct. Um, from what I've been read from the email that I was sent, they requested information. They requested it, say, and according to, to our former director, it was requested several times, and they were not sent the information they needed. And um, so they sent them a bill for three hundred dollars um, to pay for the copying and pr and gathering of this information. Um, and I understand it costs under a money. Four year under a under a FOIA request, Stephanie? Yeah. I mean, uh, they, Commissioner Rollins? They send an official FOIA request, yes. No, I just, I think, I think that, that my, my mind's spinning. I mean, I just, I just can't, I cannot comprehend this. All right, now, I, I, I'm, I'm not, I don't think they should be charged anything. If they have to ask, if, if one of our partners, I consider, I consider them partners, and maybe that's overstating, but I, I really, I go back to, I go back to what our chairman said back a number of meetings ago, and it stuck in my mind really as a poignant, very interesting insight. Now, I think I basically agree with him, but but I, I don't think they should be charged anything. If, if they've requested, tw well, maybe we should make it so that if, if, if any of the, uh, if, if any of our providers, uh, I, see, I'll think about this now. I, I mean, if any of our providers have requested twice of the department, information concerning funding or, or, or how the allocations work or anything like that and had twice not received information that if they have to FOIA the that just all right if they have to FOIA the information to get it they should be charged nothing so david what's what's the answer what's the answer when the request is made staff responds says here's the information you requested the provider doesn't agree that that's everything. The staff says, nope, that's everything. And then they submit the FOIA request because that well, happens. I mean, it's not, it's not always as simple as they, sometimes when you don't get the answer you want, you go looking to see what other answer there might be. And I'm not saying we got to tell you people. I'm just saying it's not always as simple as that. What I'm saying, what I'm saying is, you know, there, there could be – one one of the providers simply is not believing this is all we've got. I, okay, I think the commission should know that. That's my first instinct. The full commission should be aware if if any of the providers are trying and struggling to get information on how the formula is working, FMAP or whatever it might be. 
and uh, or fee for service, uh, the, 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 I mean, whatever it might be, then then if if they're if they're having to go to a FOIA request, that's like desperation. And first of all, I would say, Chairman, Mr. Gary Chairman, I would say, look, uh, I want to hear about this, and I want to get some of our staff explaining to us that this was not something where they were giving some provider a hard time. This is all we've got. This is all we've given them. Okay, uh, under the four-year request, all you have to do is push the button again. They've already sent it to them twice or whatever. All they got to do is push the repeat button on the computer, and it shoots out. I mean, what, what's wrong with that? What he's saying is why why why, why is that why, why is that why is that expensive for us? Well, and I think I think the batter came is that they didn't have something calculated that they needed calculated, but they in in other words the the staff had to create something to what they to what they were requesting, and they couldn't figure out a way to get that information other than to FOIA it, so. I think it was just a roundabout situation. I, you know, I just don't think, regardless, I think if it gets to the point that one of our, you know, our um, providers has to FOIA something from us, that the commission needs to be aware of that. And that that we make the decision then whether they pay to receive that information or not. I, you know, I just I have a real issue with us charging our people for information. So let, let me just say, can we, can we say this? Can we say that they can only ask for four year information more than once, you know, more than once a month, in order for us to to give it to them for um, free? And furthermore, the 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 issue I think probably I don't know because I don't know the issue directly. I didn't read a lot of this detail, but I imagine Pat could give us some information if we if he if if we needed it. But I don't know if we need it because it's really about money. It's about whether we charge them or not. But it's a the the FMAT information they were probably looking for was relating to what they assume FMAT is for and what and and because a lot of providers have a misunderstanding of what FMAT money is for and and so we we do need to explain to them what it's for and I'm assuming that was part of this I don't know but um but they have a real misunderstanding about what FMAT money is for in, in a lot of cases. It could be that could be Chairman. This is David again. That, that could very well be, and if there's a misunderstanding at that kind of level, sort of a bureaucratic level uh, provider, and then and then our own uh, uh, internal internal um, uh, folks that, that 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 are sending the information out, trying. I, I'm presuming nobody's intentionally doing something, but I want something added to this that says that if if anybody, um, uh, if any, uh, not necessarily an uh, any if any provider. Ask for under a four-year request. The commission shall be informed of such request, and, and for the pur for this purpose, and it's the same reason uh, I got a letter communication from uh, Berkeley Citizens, I believe is the name of the group, explaining uh, the monies they receive and the shortfall that they're that they're getting, um, and and uh, it's about basically the expenses. You know, it's the four hundred bucks that that we receive, and then three hundred dollars approximately that's paid back to them. And and I was reading through that, and I thought, well, good, the commission's got this, and 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 this allows us to see a real life problem that maybe uh, the full commission can deal with. That's what I'm talking about. I, I have, to the, deal with I have the original here in front of me where they requested it on January 26, 2021. Um, it reads under the Freedom of Information Act. I am seeking, and this came from Horry County Disabilities and Special Needs, so it came from their actual commission or their board under the freedom of information i'm seeking the following information as this is federal money it falls within the perimeters of freedom of information and should be made available without cost to the requester aggregate amount f f amount money that state ddsn has received thus far beginning march 2020 to january 2021 the anticipated amount of f map expected for the first calendar quarter of 2021 the amount of f map money expended thus far and a detailed accounting of those expenditures. The amount of FMAP money expended towards administrative costs thus far, and a detail of those expenses. The amount of FMAP encumbered with a detailed accounting of, those, of these projected expenditures to include administrative costs and direct service costs. If it, if, if it is more expectatious to email the report, please mail it to, and she gave her email address. If mailing the report, please mail it to, and she gave the Conway address, with regards to Susan John Executive Director, Horry County. 
So this is basically information we should have. I mean, I, this isn't something. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this isn't something she's asking yeah. for that should not be available to the commissioners. Should we ask for it? Uh, exactly. Um, exactly. So, so I, 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 I'm not saying that that if somebody's trying to abuse us by by picking us to death with all kinds of you know FOIA requests and things like that, I, I'm I'm saying if it has been requested, if if the same if the same thing has been requested by way of of a letter uh, or communication, an email or whatever, to to the proper authorities, to the director at DDSN, and it's been repeated twice. And then they have to, to to do their financing right or to figure out what's going on as far as the the money percolate, percolation. Then 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 if, if they have to ask for uh, under freedom of information, I, I need I need a sentence in there that says the commission shall be informed of this request. That way, just like when Berkeley Citizens sent the communication, we would all know. We would all be saying, why why, why is why are they having to request under Freedom, this is kind of embarrassing when one of our partners is having to, I, I think I'm his partners, I mean, is, is having to FOIA request stuff that should be fundamentally accessible to all of them. So I, I would, would, is, is that okay if we put in, does everybody agree that, that just if a FOIA request, I, I, before the fees issue, I just want to be notified of it. And, and I don't I don't know if we're being broadcast to, to everybody right now, but you know, whatever comes of this, if y'all run into a problem, for goodness sakes, that's why the commissioners are here. The commissioners are here not to be aloof and isolated in an ivory tower. We want to be engaged. We want to know what's going on. And we've, we've got an activist approach that we have taken that we've made well known to everybody for, you know, to, for a full year from my implementation. And I think very also, we, we want to be there for you. Right. So. Uh, not not to be isolated. We 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 want to participate. So please add. I would I would ask unanimous consent, Barry, if we could just add that if a FOIA request is made by by any one of this group that we're talking about here, this this you know cut out group, then then the um, then the commissioners shall be notified of such request. Then we can take that up and find out what's going wrong. But that a then an associate, not an associate, that, that a provider is being forced to go go to the trouble of doing a FOIA request and pay expenses when that that I, I just can't I just can't understand why I'm, why why that wouldn't be for So if we could just add a sentence on that would be a disclosure that must be made, that information must be given to the full commission promptly. I agree with that. So when you say the subset, David, are you just talking what what providers are you talking? About? Are you talking about all providers, just the county providers. boards? All providers. So. Yeah, all providers that make a FOIA request, and maybe it's something that when we ask staff about, it's some minor issue or, or whatever. Okay, that's fine. We we try to figure it out, but um, in, the, in in the, in the big picture, nobody nobody's that's a provider that, that we're associated with and have contractual relationships with should be having to make four-year requests and ought to just be forthcoming from what the first the request. What about the provider associations? That's fine. Same same with them. I agree. We should have someone Even on the provider association meeting to answer these questions before they ever come about. I mean, that's, that's the job of, of the staff. Okay. Is, can Mr. we at least say they can only do this once a month without charge? I, I don't think we. Uh, it depends I, on what they're asking for, Barry. If, if like, let's say it's, it's three different items that they're having trouble with, okay, and it, and 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 it's all done at, at at a separate time. If somebody's abusing the copier privilege or something, we could give it a name. Like, if somebody's abusing that, we're going to be informed. Uh, we're going to be informed of the request under an FOIA. And and then if they're abusing it, uh, you know, we can modify the rules if, if if somebody's being obtuse. I just can't I can't envision that. I, I really can't. Nor can we speak to every particularity. But if the commission's getting information on it, we can deal with the particulars. Okay. Can we move beyond not this issue, but I mean not this project? Can we, can we say we're going to do that? We're going to it's going to be free. Then we are, we, you heard it right, Susan. You got it. All right. Well, let, let me address for people that are not part of the commission, okay? To me, 
it should not be free for the first 50 pages. To me, it should not be 15 cent per page over 50 pages. It should be at least 25 cent per page over 50. And the first 10 pages should be free and the rest of them should be charged for. And we should have one fee that we charge per hour for this work. And it should be a, a average of all of the um, of all of the people who have would work on it so we don't get into 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 a shouting match with somebody about how much we charge and why and all that should be some sort of an average which i think the staff was planning on doing anyway um and bringing this back to us again so this is not the first time we're going to hear it however um it needs to be we almost need to need to um we have so much for you requests going on right now we almost need to do something like immediate and then and then change it a month from now i think don't don't we have additional media requests because of our popularity due to we, we normally average this is um constant we will normally average maybe like one four request a month um recently we probably got seven or eight within a week um which is not the norm it'll it'll eventually taper off and go back to the norm um, but I agree with you, Commissioner Malfred. It's part of the review that the staff was going to do in, um, in the coming months was to redo this fee schedule. Um, okay, well, can, can, we, can we redo it like soon and approve it so that we can get additional fees? Because we, we're going to get out of hand, I'm afraid, if we don't. I, um, the only thing I, we would need <coughs> time to do is get a calculation of the way the average works is that you do a calculation of the average salaries of the individuals who would be pulling the information. Um, that would probably take us 20 minutes to decipher that. And then we could do a um, fee schedule where it says any four year requests would be, when I was over at DHHS, we set the rate at 20, I think it was 20 or $25 an hour. So there was no confusion about what it would be an hour. You didn't didn't have to do a calculation every time the FOIA came in. So, People knew because of our fee schedule that it was twenty dollars an hour. I will for, for this for this purpose of today, so we can get this approved today and get this started today, and 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 put it out for public comment later and tell them that it's an emergency situation and we're putting out public comment later and we'll we'll talk about it more later. Can we say it's fifty dollars or less and then per hour and then you can figure out what it is and then we can approve this today and get it done. Fifty well. $50 less would be on the high side. Yeah. Um, One recommendation I had is that we could work on those edits, confer with you, Commissioner Malfors, about them, make sure they're in line, and then submit it within the commission meeting materials, and you all could approve it. Commission meeting. That's true. We could commute. That's, that's true. That's smarter. See, see how much smarter she is than me. I don't know why she's not sitting <laughs> here instead of me sitting there. That's right. That's what we should do. We, we're going to fix this before the next commission meeting. And then we're going to, and then we're going to approve it at the commission meeting. Does that sound good to y'all? Mr. Commissioner, that sounds great. Commissioner Mappers, can I go yes. back to the um, issue about charging providers and notifying the committee? I want to make sure we're clear that we're just, is the purpose just to notify the commission? And the only reason I'm asking that is because I'm concerned about timelines. Um, we have certain days that we have to respond to a FOIA request. So I don't want um, for your request to get held up in a cycle where we're missing timelines that the statute requires us to meet. So is the purpose just to inform the commission? It's not it's the 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 next chairman, meeting. chairman, David, David here. No, no, it's simply be informed. Okay. And, and that doesn't mean we have to give approval, Constance. It's just informed because that will give us all the opportunity to say what's going on okay. that we can't get. A, 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 a request for information to, to uh, one of the members and uh, one of the providers and, and we, we, we maybe can cut to the chase and, 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 uh, and, and figure that out. So that's not approval, it's just information so that we can follow up as a commission. Well, in my opinion as a commissioner, no provider should have to be feel the need to FOIA us. They should be able to call up to that that was wow. Columbia and get the answers to the questions they're asking without having to issue a FOIA for it. I, I don't disagree with that at all. Commissioner Rawson, I would agree with that, except for the case where Commissioner Lamel was describing scenarios where they requested the information, we given it to them multiple times, and for some reason right. they don't think that's all of the information. That's so, correct. Um, 
we want to make sure we don't have we discourage folks from bombarding our staff with requests sure. when they've already been responded to sure. um because we and don't that, want it to become burdensome at right. that point i would i would i mean if, if it comes to that point i would honestly um inform the commission of that and let the commissioners or let someone talk with that person whether it be the executive director or whomever have a person to person conversation with with whomever whichever agency it is and say look this is what we've got right now um but this is what we're going to be getting together um you know and we will try to get that information to you give them an estimated timeline for getting that information I think most of our providers are more than willing to work with us in that respect. Um, I just think the, I, I don't think they should have to FOIA us. I mean, I just think, you know, All we right. need to be more transparent than what we've been in the past with this kind of thing. And, you know, th this is information we should have had anyway. I mean, it's it's not like something that, you know, that we, that, that we shouldn't have. <laughs> and so that that's my point on this particular issue. Okay, we got. Um, I think we're, we're going to fix the fees, and then and then and then um, and we'll give it to them for free. Any FOIA request they have, um, and then I don't want the electronic format to be free either. There should be there should be at least one hour of charge for that. Well, some of that is pulled right out of the statute, and I've had. To, I'll uh, have you don't to... have any choice. You don't have any choice. Yeah. It's not in the statute. It shouldn't be free. Um, but anyway, we'll move on from that, and we'll get that straight. And we'll fix that for the next meeting. Um, if you don't mind, let me look at it before. Sure. Um, and then, and then if anybody else wants to look at it, let me know. Of course, we'll, we'll send it to the, to the committee um, for that purpose. And then um, number three, it says it is free on the thing. Um, so, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to fix it, and then we're going to move on. So, um, I guess I need a motion to to. Um, for us to move this to the commission at the next meeting after it's repaired. So I, I, I'm saying that if we, I'm sorry, I'm saying if I don't have an objection, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. So if nobody objects, that's what we're doing. And we're moving on to the next, um, next topic. Cause we only have about 45 minutes left in here and I got to go, or I got to go to another meeting in here. So, um, so the, the next topic is a big one. Um, it relates to our anti-harassment policy. Um, and I just wanted to know, I assume everybody's read it carefully and I only have one issue I want to bring up, but um, there may be other ones. And Stephanie, you being a woman, there may be far more than one. So I wanted to um, give you the opportunity to um, say whatever you want to say about this policy. And of course, David as well. Um, and of course, Gary as well, but um, but moving on, there's only one issue I'll bring up, but I'll, may, I'll wait till the end. So go ahead, okay. Stephanie. Chairman, I, I did have the opportunity to read it. I thought it was well done. Um, if I don't mind asking, where did, who wrote this and did we pattern it after another agency? Can anyone answer that question? This is, um, it was a collaboration between um, Liz Lamont, the HR director, myself, and myself, um, and I did consult with other state agencies in regards to their anti-harassment policies. Um, so I probably think I consulted with at least eight other state agencies um, and got their policies, looked at some of their policies, took some of their ideas from their policies, um, and then me and Liz crafted our policy according to those. That it is very well done, Constance. The one thing I do want to make sure that we have somewhere in here, and I don't know where in here it would belong, but I do think somewhere in here it needs to say that the executive director is to provide the board monthly or the commission monthly or, or as events occur, um, a written report um, that there is a situation. It doesn't have to be specific. Um, but we do need to know that there are issues pending or that are um, being investigated. Um, I know in the past, Mary had let us know about harassment and that kind of thing. But, um, you know, I want to make sure that that's in writing somewhere that every month we are to get a report, just like we get a report on COVID or we get a report on, you know, QA, QA, um, QI, QA um, incidences. 
I, I think we need to have a report from the executive director monthly that, that tells us if there is anything pending, if anything is going on, if anything is happening, um, just because those are things that can infect, could impact the integrity of this organization and this agency. And Commissioner Rollison, this is Constance again. I think the appropriate place to place that is in the elect executive limitations policy. Okay. And what directs the director what they should be informing the commission of. Okay. Perfect. David, do you have a did you have a statement that you wanted to put in it, or did you? Um... Well, there are two there are two there are two angles, and and she she anticipated that one that uh, we we want to make sure, and and you can enhance the uh, executive uh, policy uh, section that everybody's familiar with, uh, which was, uh, <clears throat> I think it's 800 sub, oh my goodness, sub, I don't have it in front of me, sub two and then sub five, uh, which is a disclosure at all times to the commission. I don't think monthly, uh, if, 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 uh, if, if it rises, I don't think monthly is enough. I want to know about it immediately uh, if, if there's something uh, that, that we need to be hearing about that could, could arise to some public issue. And that's already been that's a, that wording is already there. All we need to do is 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 you know just state it again that 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 item that kind of item sexual harassment would be included. Now I think we we don't want to uh, short circuit the possibility that a sexual harassment issue uh, could rise to the uh, level of uh, uh, a sexual assault. So it could be criminal if 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 we jump into something with without. And this is why we need to know immediately, and we need to have a caveat in here This almost looks like a short circuit. That is, something should, that should have been taken to SLED didn't get taken to SLED. It, it, it ended up working, um, working through the process as an harassment issue only, and it could have been something much, much, much more significant than that. So somewhere, like in the item number six, uh, management supervisory action number five, number six, complaint procedures, uh, the the um, the possibility, in other words, needs to be put somewhere that um, the the intent of the agency is to try to resolve sexual harassment issues. Comma, however, any sexual harassment issue, if significant enough, might rise to the level of a sexual assault, and therefore be a criminal action, which should be investigated by an appropriate policing authority, period. And that, that leaves open then the possibility that staff should, should not interfere in the sense of, oh, well, we can, we, we, we can sort of handle this internally. Well, it might need to be a level higher. So I, I, don't, I don't want to box it in too much. Uh, and and uh, I'm afraid that has happened in the recent past. And uh, so we, we want to make sure that that is covered so that uh, we, we don't leave that out and, and, and um, box, box somebody out of what really ought to be done, and that is a higher level look see. Okay. If, if, there's, if there's an example of, of where a sexual assault has taken place and it has been reported, I'd sure like to know about that. Yeah, exactly. We would too. Yeah, I mean, I, I, to, that, to my knowledge, there, there has not been. Point. Right? I mean, there, is there, there's, there's no indication anywhere that, and, and, a criminal act that's taken place has never has failed to be reported to the appropriate authorities. We don't know that for sure. How can you prove you that? Don't. No, that, that's what I'm saying. The proof is it has not happened until there's some proof that it has. And there's been no proof ever produced anywhere by anyone that that's happened. You, you don't you don't prove the negative. You got to prove the positive. The policy and calling it sexual harassment, we don't know. Uh, the, the level of whatever this might be in the future. Therefore, the point is uh, we, we don't want to exclude in, in, in what we're doing here the possibility that it could be something greater and that that should be reported to. Um, uh, now, uh, upon what basis? Well, for number one, we're going to be looking at it because we're going to be getting a report on it, and that issue would then come up. Well, did this particular incident rise to the level of? Well, let's bring in SLED and find out before we do anything else necessarily. Now, if the concession is made, no, it, I, I wasn't. I wasn't harmed. I wasn't touched. I mean, I, I don't feel like I was assaulted. All right, then, then you're internal. It would be harassment only, dealt with by the agency, 
if uh, possibly, or the person could do a lawsuit. I mean, you know, that's always a possibility. But we're trying to straighten in this. We're trying to straighten out as quickly as possible what the offense is. But it could rise to something much greater, and therefore, the uh, that's even more reason the commission needs to know about all these incidents and the degree of, and whether or not it was something that strikes us as being something. Well, let's bring let's bring in the let's bring in a a, a, a policing authority to take a look at it. Commissioner Thomas, this is Constance. So I would caution adding that type of thing to the policy only because one, we don't really have the authority to have SLED to come in and investigate if, because sometimes victims of, if it rises to sexual assault, sometimes those victims do not want it to rise to a criminal action. Um, I well, think- but Excuse me, hold on just a second, Constance, Constance, wait a minute. That does not necessarily mean to uh, to, to the code enforcers, and I'm talking about policing enforcers, that they will not pursue something because there is a victim and the victim says, well, I don't want to prosecute, doesn't mean that there won't be a prosecution. It depends on the offense. You see that a lot in domestic issues where you see uh, someone beaten up and then that person says, well, I don't want him prosecuted. And they'll say, we're arresting him anyway, and they prosecute. And uh, because there's enough evidence without the testimony of the abused person, uh, that's fairly common, as a matter of fact. So I think you'll get that sort of information from at least the solicitors in Greenville County will tell you that. Uh, so because what they say is not necessarily what we should be looking at, because the person that did this may have a history of this. It could be repeatable. From a criminal prosecution point of view, we need to be aware of that, and we have a responsibility to ferret out what's going on. So we need a sentence in this, and I fully applaud, and I think it was beautifully written. It, just that needs to be covered so that the commission understands that we are another level of authority that can look at this and say, we need to get somebody in here, no matter what anybody else says. You know, we're protecting the agency, and we're protecting the employees of the agency. You see another legal issue other than what he just said? I mean, I, I need to vet it more, to be honest. I don't want to um, misspeak, so. Okay, well, let me say, okay, well, then we're going to add something unless we decide we can take it out then. So so for today, we're going to add that in, and if we decide we need to leave it, take it out, we will. Cause us about that. Okay. Okay, David, we're going to add that in, and then we're going to, if we decide, if she decides legally we must take it out, we'll talk about that at the next meeting. This, this is probably going to come back to us at the next meeting, I would get all of respect. Yeah, I don't mind, and, and I don't mind uh, discussing this. I think this is really, really important. I don't mind discussing this in the full commission and uh, why, why there needs to be that extra level with the Senate that's, that's guarding the pre uh, uh, just put your place in the in the position of someone who has been um, harassed, and and it's a close call, harassment or assault. Maybe it was a hands-on thing. Maybe something physical happened, uh, or or almost. Well, I mean, there's a difference in assault and slash battery. The, mm -hmm. the battery is the touch, and the assault is your your fear you're going to be touched. Well, that takes it to a different level. So I I, I am. Uh, I am I am uh, trying to be as clear as I can that once again this transparency issue is absolutely absolutely necessary because it sets more eyes on what is going on and it's not just the director it's also the commission and the commission needs to look and if if there's an alarm that kind of sounds we get more information and if it seems like it's at one level that is de minimis okay y'all handle it internally it seems like and if we can avoid a lawsuit, that would be wonderful. But it could be something much greater than that and much more dimensional. And that's why we're a commission and we can uh, delve into more information and get to the bottom of stuff. Okay, let me just bring up one issue that I have with this entire um, document and, and, um, and discuss that because I think it's very important. We will add this in and like I say, Constance will get back to us on any other developments about that, but we will add that in for you, for us, for the commission, David. Um, and we'll try to, we can try to bring it back to the commission for approval, but I don't know if that would be possible in that length of time. So this directive would go out for external review 
um, for 10 business days if it leaves committee. So if you wanted to approve it with that addition, unless some sort of inquiry means that that should not go in there. Um, well, we need. We I'm not sure we, if we you really want, wanted we, we, to put it for external review until you've approved it. I don't think I don't think we want to put it out for external review until we approve it. I don't yep. think we want to approve it until we know for sure what she's thinking. So we come back next month. So we're gonna come back next month. But yep. there's one thing about this I want to bring back to because I want to I want to move through this quickly next month because we're gonna have other things to do next month. And so I, I and I don't like things lingering. Although I know this is very important, so we will bring it back next month. Um, but. The big issue that I have with this matter is it says a complaint may be maybe verbally or in writing. To me, a complaint should be in writing because you can't discuss anything that happened to somebody without it being in writing, without that story changing. So I think that it really needs to say a complaint need to be, all we need to do in my opinion is take out the word verbally right there under complaint procedures in number A. Although it does say immediately after that, that if the complaint is made verbally, the employee will be required to complete the form to assist DDSN. It's more of a notice requirement, I think, than anything, Barry. So the issue becomes if somebody makes a verbal complaint, well, we is also that need enough to, to put us on notice? Which I think it is. I think under pretty much the federal law, the verbal notice of the the activity is enough to put the agency on notice. So um, I'm not suggesting somebody I'm not suggesting somebody should not be able to tell somebody back off. Obviously, you want to do that verbally. But what I'm saying is, if you're making no, any kind of complaint, it needs to be in writing. Yeah. So what Commissioner Lamell is saying that is we initially say if you make the you can make the complaint verbally or in writing. So most oftentimes when a complaint is made, it's initially made verbally. Um, and then we're going to re to a to the to their supervisor or to HR. Um, it just depends on how the person verbally makes the complaint. They make. Well, can't, well, can't we just say when you make that complaint, you understand in order to make this complaint, you have to put it in writing? Well, the next line says that. That it, well, it if, the, if the complaint it is made, that, but it should be reworded then verbally. It say yeah. that. I mean, it doesn't give me that. I did read that, but it doesn't give me that first impression when I, I mean, it, when I first read this, it did not give me that impression. So this should at least be reworded so well, that it's clear. And there's a situation, for example, if someone is a, is battery, you know, suffers assault and battery, um, they may not be able to write. <laughs> they may be in a situation where they're unable to do that. And if that's the case, um, a verbal is just as powerful as nonverbal until they're able to reduce that to writing. Well, this person though is writing, we're, this policy is for this agency. So everybody that works here, I hope can read and write if they can. I understand, but let's say that they're beat so bad that their arms are broken or that they are assaulted to the point that they're unable to write at the time. Um, for that example, daughter, yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's, a, that's a possibility and you have to, you got to consider that, Barry, is what I'm saying. Purpose is to trigger notice to the agency. So that's um, I would caution taking verbally out because that we may get noticed verbally. And then we're going to require that once we get that notice verbally, that they subsequently put it in writing. And I think it also. Do we have a time frame. Do we have a time frame on when that's to be put in writing, like within ten yeah. days, something like that. Yeah, we also need to. We also need to put a time frame in there when it's to be put in writing, whether it be ten days. Or I, I agree. Days. I, I agree with the put in writing thing. I think I think Gary's probably right. I mean, it, it, it's a subsequent mandate, but like, let's just put a time frame on it. I, you know, I, I have found that things in writing really, really, I'm, and I'm just talking kind of as a lawyer here, but I'm, I'm not all that great a lawyer, but when things are put in writing, somebody comes in my office and they're talking about a, a criminal action or something, if I write stuff down, if I can get the police report, that sure does, that sure does start uh, really, really quantifying and in, in, in a very specific way what took place. It's a little hard to press out of that. So to have the writing as soon as possible to reduce it to to reduce it to document form uh, sort of sort of really does uh, give you the, the parameters. Uh, otherwise, if it's left too long, I don't know. The story starts just kind of developing and changing and moving and morphing. So 
I, I, I think, uh, okay, fine, Get verbal to start with, but then within 10 days or, or as soon as possible, three days, 10 days, seven days, uh, the, 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 the uh, complaint shall be, shall be put into writing or shall, uh, uh, shall be filled out the form. Uh, and, and writing doesn't necessarily, a la uh, uh, Stephanie's uh, point, does not have to be, it could be a verbal statement that it's put into writing. That way the individual can say to uh, someone, all right, here's my statement verbally, uh, and here's what happened, here are the circumstances, here are the dates, here's exactly what took place, and then... Uh, and you write it down for so that would be, Yeah, th th but, it's, but it is put into writing. Right, but it's in writing because you wrote it down for me. Right. All right, guys, I would also like to address um, Section 6B, um, where it says investigation and confidentiality. Um, I would like for it to say that last sentence, where it says, upon completion of the investigation, DDSN will communicate the findings to the complainant and any other necessary and appropriate bodies. I think that also needs to include the commission to communicate the findings to the commission, the complainant, and any other necessary and appropriate bodies. I agree with that. Okay, well that solves David's problem from earlier, I think, but um, what I was gonna say about that though is, let's say we didn't finish that about seven, let's, look, can we make that seven days? You had to put it in writing within seven days so we can get an actual date, day number? Seven calendar days. Seven, okay. Seven calendar days works for me. Um, all right, so it's going to say seven calendar days. You have to put it in writing, and I just want that to be. Well, I guess it is clear enough. I mean, I it just kind of startled me when I first read it, but I guess it is clear enough that it says in, you have to put it in writing. But just make sure this. If there's any other word you want to put in there, that says that the ver it verbally must be put in writing within seven days, and make it as clear as a bell, um, because like I say, verbally. Is, is one thing is it and, and if, the, if the individual uh, let's go back to what constance said or stephanie i forgot which it was excuse me uh but but let's suppose the person is so shook up that they're going to have trouble themselves writing it they can give a statement to legal uh, to our legal counsel or whoever y'all want to give it to so they, they don't personally have to write it if they're not too good at, at you know putting sentences together or they're too shook up okay they can verbally give the statement so, uh, so that it so that it is it is then put into document form and put into written form. Just so they know it's going to be put into written form. That's the point. Yeah, uh, I'd put like to put in written form based on what I just said, or somebody just said, right? I'm, I'm sorry, Barry. Say I'm that again. I'm saying it would be put it that they understand it be put in written form based on what that person just said. You know, I like for them to read it and and then to to at least uh, to sign it. I mean, you you right. get that a lot with statements made to the police. I'm sort of I'm sort of taking my, my my very limited knowledge of criminal criminal stuff that I've dealt with for 25 years and 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 kind of kind of giving you what 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 we see in the world and what we see in the world is a document from a witness or from a victim or whatever uh, or from the assailant. I mean, they can sometimes give a statement. There it is. All right, so you got a typewritten statement, and then the guy signs it, and and so we we, we just we, we need it. We need that within seven days. They don't need to write it. It's not necessary. It could be the intake officer, whoever the intake official is, puts it in writing for them. They sign it, and and there you go. We we now have the written document we can work off of. Wonderful. Okay, well, and then um, I'm I'm going to say that. That um, that if I do not hear an objection, unless there's something else that I need to bring up about this document, if I don't hear an objection, we're gonna we're going to um, rework this based upon our conversations today. And well, make sure, make sure, Chairman. Uh, 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 one of one, one uh, 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 things, Stephanie gave something, and I thought it was included in, in at, at the very beginning, but maybe maybe she's exactly right. I, I want this to come back to the commission so that we can review what took place and and we we will be acting as kind of an ultimate final uh not not approval source but we we will be knowing you know from the very beginning to the end this was the history this is what took place so that we are totally in the loop of what has happened okay I got everything what if what if so what if the individuals involved don't want want to maintain confidentiality 
right? Like the, the, complaint, the, the, the complainant. Say, say the complainant says, I don't, I don't want this information revealed to anybody. It's been handled. I don't want it revealed to anybody else. The complainant says that. Well, the, com the complainant is, is uh, uh, would, we, we would be receiving information on the parameters. We don't necessarily need to know the names unless we started really pushing for them, and particularly the assailant, because we, we might need to know more information. This might be the first charge against, the third charge against this particular individual. We need to know that. These are employees. I mean, I hate to be ugly, but they are they are our staff. And the, when they're at work, and say, what, ha uh, what happens to them at work is our responsibility. Stephanie, and by statute, we have one employee, the executive director. Well, the we executive have one employee. Director. Okay. All right. The executive director. That's it. Right. We have to that's by statute. One employee. What do you mean one employee? What we are you have, talking about? The commission has one employee, the executive director. Responsibility carried to the entire agency. We can hire and fire one person, but we have responsibility for the whole agency. In fact, Gary Lemon told me we have responsibility for the providers. No, that's not what I said, David. What I said was the providers are part okay. of our constituency. I don't know what I thought was good, very good insights, but. Yeah, that, it's it's uh, no, but, that, that's you're conflating but, the two, David. What I said is the providers are part of okay, our. Right, I'm, okay, I'm conflating. It. I'm conflating. It. I think it's a good idea to conflate in this in this particular perspective. If if the providers, as a matter of fact, are providing and we have uh, information about wrongdoing out of the field, we need to know about that too. If there's sexual activity that we need to hear about, we have been told about that in the past. I mean. We need to know because it's affecting the totality. But we're just going to have to address this in executive session. Then, if somebody doesn't want to be doesn't want it out. Well, the point is the distinction between the person who was abused, the accuser, that person. I can see. All right, you don't. That, that name does not necessarily have to come out. But the individual that has been accused, we need to know this kind of information for a number of reasons. And I think it would probably be a pretty good idea to ask, since we have an employment attorney is now uh, independent employment, about the consequences of that sort of information uh, from a civil standpoint as far as liability. Probably a good idea. A liability of a liability of a person who internally was found uh, uh, found to have committed particular wrongs and and uh, or at the outset that sounds significant enough to the commissioners to bring in sled to investigate and see if it rose to the level of something else uh, you're concerned about liability to them when, when, yes. when, when we're having to deal with the safety of the of, of the employees yeah he said yes David um, I guess we will. So, the, so then, can we can we can we fix this and then let our the um, attorney look at it before we come back for the next meeting? Well, sure. I mean, that's that's fine. But I'm going to move that that the outcome of all these things be reported to us. I think the distinction laid between uh, the the perpetrator the the uh, the presumed the perpetrator and the victim uh, should be reported to us also. We need to know the parameters of the outcome. We may need to change policies. We, I'll give you an example. We may need to do training that, that would uh, be ramped up. We may need to do investigation of the background of certain individuals more thoroughly than we're doing it. All kinds of reasons why the commission should know about this. And our one employee would therefore be the individual, being the executive director, that would enforce those decisions that would be policy decisions. Right. Well, we we can fix this and 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 then let him um and and we'll send it to the committee and we will um allow him to um to look at it and we'll talk about that more in the next meeting as to exactly what he said and didn't say. And well, we may have an we may have an executive committee meeting for the for the policy committee. We'll see. Um, 
we're not we're also open to that possibility too but anyway we'll see um but we'll see what happens but we, this will not be discussed further until next month after we get these matters these serious matters um looked into um so can i if i if i don't if i don't have an objection we're gonna fix these matters do we understand how we're fixing because i don't want to go back to that yes i've taken notes and we have the meeting recorded so you might want to look at your watch and see what time it is so you can look back at it yeah three fifty seven. um so so anyways they're going to look at the recording and they're going to fix this document and then we're going to we're going to look at it again and we will look at it before the next meeting and we will be discussing this more in the next meeting after we talk to our um attorney regarding this matter our employment attorney who's a specialist in this matter um so if i don't hear an objection it's, it's continued until next month the next item on the agenda relates to relates to the uh, appeal and recon reconsideration of decisions and i'm going to allow susan to elaborate on that as quickly as she can um because i only have a couple of things about this document that i want to that i want to say and, it, and ask if anybody else has anything to say about it before we approve it go ahead susan sure so the goal of the edits to this document were to provide clarification um, because sometimes in the um, provider community, we see a little bit of confusion between DDSN decisions, referring to our, our um, scope of state funded decisions, um, and then also the DHHS, Department of Health and Human Services, Medicaid services related reconsideration decisions. Um, so we have a role in both of those as far as DDSN proper. Um, we have made the directive incidentally um, very consistent with the draft regulation on appeals on ddsn decisions that um, went through legislative committee and the commission already um, so just so you know that um, and i'll just clarify for you all um, the role that we have with the dhhs sorry the department of health and human services um, reconsiderations um, is a role that 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 agency has asked us to take to um, give an extra look at the decisions made by our providers as contractors um, and to prevent kind of a clogging of the fair hearing process over it at that agency at DHHS. So that's kind of where these changes are coming from. We saw a need. Um, we went through a bunch of revisions to get here. We've conferred with um, our counterparts at Department of Health and Human Services because it refers to their process and obviously they have to approve that. They were also pleased with it and they're looking for this um, approved version um, soon. What questions? Thank, we... only, thank you. The only question that I have is, or not questions, really comments more than anything is one of the question but the other two are comments um i just think you need to spell out under definitions when it says um, um H -C -H -C -D -S, that should be spelled out. and also where it says um icfs and i and and i said ID should be spelled out yeah we can repeat it and i, I don't think that's the problem yeah it's, um, it's okay to do that um and um the other the big issue that i wanted to say what well, not big issue but the only small issue i wanted to say is should it say on on step two um the state director under review on step two page 14 david is put, i'm on page two set page 14 um two of this document page 14 total um should it say the executive director or should it say a de executive director or his designee because sh should that be more you so there's an internal process that goes on to get recommendations to the state director the code actually refers to the state director so our agency had you know they're called different things but ours is called the state director and um we used to have the code reference in there and you can see it in the strike through at the bottom of that section um so basically wherever that um, eligibility appeal um, gets submitted, it eventually hits my desk and I confer with it. 
and we get it to a point from the policy office that we feel good about it before we recommend to the state director to review it and either affirm or send us back again. Okay. So there's a process in there, but yes, you're right. It, it doesn't just go straight from the appeal to the state director to investigate. Um, and the last thing I wanted to mention under number C, this page 16, David, um, and whoever else is looking at the current versions, because um, I love printed versions. Um, yeah. Um, it says that if necessary, the staff will assist with filing. And I'm not saying we shouldn't assist with filing, but I'm not exactly sure. I mean, if, it, if it's a if it's a somebody that has been rejected and, and is kind of a problem person, do we really want to say in a policy that we will? I mean, can we just say that? I mean, we don't always we don't want to assist everybody if they if they if they're continuing to 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 be rejected and rejected and rejected. We don't want to continue and continue and continue to assist them. And if we put that in there, we're we're, we're kind of forced to do it, aren't we? Sure. So we could look at that um, a little closer if we needed to, but I think that the meaning of that is, first of all, the people receiving services are individuals identified with disabilities. And so sometimes folks have difficulty with writing or typing or accessing information. Maybe they have difficulty just um, using their hands, etc. cetera. Um, and so the intent of that is, if necessary, then it shouldn't be a barrier that it has to be submitted in writing that will accommodate as needed. I don't have a problem with that, but I, maybe you should say that if they're rejected numerous times, then we will not, you know. So the portion you're referring to is um, actually uh, part of the Department of Health and Human Services decisions. I'm not sure if it's repeated. I'd have to look if it's an eligibility of the DDSN portion. So we're kind of following the requirements set about by another agency, just as a, as their designee to do it. Right, and I think um, it's important to note that in the directive and in the appeal stuff, we say that we will help people make the appeal. Basically, we will assist them to log the appeal, but it's really clear that there's no billable activity to help people gather evidence for their case, right? So yeah. we're really not talking about helping people argue why okay, they right, should right. get it. We're really just talking about if Johnny doesn't have a computer and needs somebody to send an email on his behalf, that will do that just to get the, the ball rolling. Yeah, another, okay, another phrasing of that is appears on page six under step one, the last sentence. It's actually page 15 in the material. It says reasonable accommodations to assist with communication will be provided upon request. I think that's what we're talking about. Okay, well, that could be there too then, couldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Why don't we just do that? We can ask um, for that change. If we can get that change. Um, be I, I just think it'd be nice because I just didn't want to. Yeah. I'm just trying to help us here. All right. I think it's good talking about it because obviously everyone reads it from different perspectives and experience. We want to make sure it's accessible and clear. Okay. Um, it, and, and under this document, under it's page 19, 20, and 21, the, the, this, this is just the policy in a different form, correct? A, B, and C? So these are the forms that we would give to people receiving services. So if it, it's really a matter of the process for appealing, right? Okay. Um, and and it's kind of like an attachment that you can give to somebody who needs to understand the appeal rights. Right. Okay. It's kind of like a handout. So it is the policy in another format, but it's really just a handout. I got it. I just want to make sure. Okay. Um, if I don't have an objection, we're gonna we're going to um, approve this with the um, to be sent out for um, comment with the with the slight amount of unless somebody has something else. Anybody have anything else on this document? Hearing none, we're going to move for it to be a public comment so we can um, get it approved. The next item on the agenda is the um, conflict-free case management. Um, I really don't have 
anything to say about this, except that it was a very well written document, um, 53517 DD, which is number 24, page 24. I think it's a wonderfully done document. I don't know who did it. Who did that? Hmm? Who did it? Um, so this document was written jointly by DHHS and, um, oh, sorry, Department of Health and Human Services and DDSN. With the, with the dates down here, it's wonderful the way it's, it's, there's no ambiguity. We don't like ambiguity in this committee and there's no ambiguity in that document. So that's very good. Does anybody have any, any, um, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to move because I've only got a few more minutes in this, in this, in this committee and I got it and I have to go, like I say, um, so does anybody have any questions about conflict-free case management or any, anything to add regarding conflict-free case management? 53517DD. Hearing none, um, it is approved as, I mean, it is approved as written. Um, if you have any objection, please let me know. Um, next item on the agenda is, um, is a proposal to mark obsolete a federal grant application and to add one sentence into the um, exe um, executive limitations policy that covers this. You'll see it's on number page number 27. Um, present to the commission for approval all federal grant applications as soon as it is practical and prior to the receipt of funds, prior to the actual receipt of funds. Um, Mr. Chairman, I have no problem um, making that, that policy obsolete, but there are some other changes I'd like to see made to executive limitations policy. Well, next month we're bringing up the executive limitations policy. So, okay. Okay. Um, and, and because we got, we got something else that David has a problem with, I actually, would um would, would ask that we would consider and you y'all can look at this for next month um we were gonna i, I was gonna ask that we consider making the two hundred thousand dollar maximum um a hundred thousand but i don't really have a lot of time to be getting into it today um i have issues with number 12 under number yeah number 12 and then i'd like to see us add something in here that the where it's at under number 17. Um, I'd like for something to be added in there that we will receive a report regarding harassment, assault, sexual assault, sexual harassment um, from the director as needed um, within a timely manner of blah, blah, blah. Okay, um, so those are two sentences I'd like. And I, I think, you know, at some point we need to address number 12, which is the internal auditor. Um, you know, as a commission, we've talked repeatedly about the fact that really the internal auditor does not need to answer to the executive director. That person needs to answer directly to the commission to solve a lot of the problems. Um, it, it's not normal. It's not normal for our commission. It's not normal for any organization for the internal auditor to answer to the executive director. And um, we need to look at that. We need to find out if there is, in fact, legislation that requires it to be that way. Um, and if it is, we need to see that. Um, if not, we need to address that. Okay, we'll address that for the next meeting. And okay. we'll also, I would ask that we would address, like I say, well, we don't need to address it today. We're going to consider the $100,000, drop that to $100,000 instead of two hundred, dollars But we don't need to talk about that today. The only That's thing fine. I would ask is, do what? That's good. That's what, next month is fine. I just want to make put that put those things on your on your agenda. Okay. The next the next the next thing I would say is that it says a number C on number nine. It says establish a, of advisory councils. I think we just need to say establish a meeting with these people instead of advisory councils. I'm not sure why it's advisory councils. So there's some reference in the code about advisory councils being established. Um, I don't have the code reference in front of me. I think that's a historical reference. We can certainly research it for next time. Research that for next time. I, I'm sorry we're getting bogged down. We're gonna have to do a lot of stuff next month, but that's just okay. the way it goes sometimes. Um, did the, um, 
The next item on the agenda, very quickly, is the um, is the procedure for medical and dental treatment. I don't have anything on the medical and dental treatment. If if I don't hear an objection, I'm going to say that this one is approved as written, and that we're going to put it out for public comment. Um, is there any objection to that? If I hear no objection, we're moving on. Okay, that's approved. Um, under tab two, it says um, under under funding for services, it says that we're going to we're, we we need them that we would put this out to public comment. I mean, sorry, put this out to to, to the finance committee. Um, we're gonna we're, we are gonna put, put this over to the finance committee, and we will deal with it um, there. If there's no objection to that. Um, if there is, please let me know very quickly. Um, so if there's no objection, that's going to the, the finance committee. I hear no objection, so it's going to the finance committee. The next item and the final item for this meeting, and I literally have to go in just a couple minutes, I'm sorry, is we, we are asked, we were, your paperwork asked for this, for these next two, the employment first and What's the last one? Employment services standards individual. And employment services standard individual to be to be to staff. Um, but I would ask that we that the staff would would fix this the way these two documents the way they'd like them to be fixed, and then for it to come back to the committee for us to for us to look at. Because I have a couple of things I'd like to add into it, but I really don't have time to get into it right now. So because um, this is very important to me. Employment for our for the people that we that we serve is very important to me because I think there's a lot of dignity and self worth in employment. I actually thought that would be our number one issue whenever I came on the commission, but there's so many other issues to to address. We really never got much to it, so I'd like to address it more at the next meeting. Um, and of course, fee for service I have found is, or well, long before this I found was more important than anything. So, in my opinion, so um, so um, for all the people we serve. So, if there's no objection, we're going to bring that back to the committee for um, for review. Um, hopefully, a relatively quick review because we're going to have a lot of stuff to to do next meeting. So, and I will not ask y'all to only make it an hour and fifteen minutes next time. Um, but today I had to. So, if there's no objection, we're going to bring that back up for the committee next month after I. Um, Instead of instead of bringing it out to the to the staff, no objection to that. With no objection, um, we we would ask. I believe we're finished. Um, I believe we're. I believe I'm asking for a motion to adjourn. If there's no objection to that. I do need a motion for that to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? No move. Okay. Second. Okay. We made motion made second to adjourn. I'd rather do that instead of just say we adjourn. So motion made second that we're adjourned. Thank you very much. I'm sorry for the for having to rush through, but um, but I really gotta gotta move to another room. Thank you very much for coming and and thank you for all those who are listening and.